Wolf Ties Soundshot. Insights and analysis from one of the leading law firms in Central, Eastern, and Southeastern Europe. New opportunities created by technical innovations favor the bold and those who can best leverage them for added value. Sectoral lines are blurring as a result of innovative technologies, requiring collaboration on an unprecedented scale. Business leaders must constantly question, what does digitalization mean for my company, for my sector? Anna Ritsova and Janusz Toth explore how digital transformation is shaping the markets in Central and Eastern Europe, including new players, new partnerships, and big opportunities. Anna Ritsova is the managing partner of the firm's office in Bulgaria. She specializes in regulatory and commercial matters in the energy and telecommunication sectors. Janusz Toth is an experienced transaction lawyer who heads the local corporate M&A, competition and antitrust, and compliance teams in Budapest. He advises clients in a variety of industries, such as healthcare and life sciences, FMCG, and TMT, on a range of regulatory and other issues. Hello, Anna. It's great to have you uh, discussing today's topic around digitalization and digital transformation. If I may ask what perception do you think a lawyer can reasonably have about this topic? A lawyer who is engaged in advising businesses, obviously, and from his or her uh, legal perspective. Hello, Janusz. Thanks a lot. It's really great to discuss digitalization uh, from the perspective of CE. And um, I was thinking about this topic, and actually it is interesting to to go back a little step and ask what is digitalization, digital transformation? And if we consider the nature, digitalization is, in fact, digitization. It's a process of converting information from analog into digital, in other words, computer-readable format. And this facilitates the processing of such information by computers. And this way, the information of all kinds and all formats can be carried, processed with the same efficiency. And when we say digital, uh, some people would think of going paperless, others of data and analytics and artificial intelligence. And uh, some would think um, agile teams, flexible work, or open plan offices. And this shows how diverse is the notion of digitalization. And we see this in our everyday work, everyday life. In all cases, what is really the tiny red line linking all of the processes when we talk about digital transformation is that we see integration of digital technology into all areas of businesses and this fundamentally changes how businesses operate and deliver value to customers. Um, And recently I came across a report prepared by McKinsey which was not surprisingly evaluated that the six leading technological developments which will bring the most advancement on the way how we work, how we live, are product of digital transformation. And they list mobile internet, advanced robotics, artificial intelligence, internet of things, cloud technology. And the mobile internet, internet of things, cloud technology are themselves information and communication technologies. And one particular feature to the information technologies is that we see that they advance very rapidly and have very strong network effects. And when we talk about digital transformation, one is technology and technological changes, which are very high speed. But on the other hand, business has another perspective. And this is the cultural change that requires organizations to continually challenge the status quo, to to experiment. And we see that business leaders question all the time, what is digital transformation for their sector, for their organization? What are the steps that they need to undertake? Where are the investments in order to be competitive in the market? And we see these questions across the sectors, across the value chain, irrespective of size, geography, ownership of companies. But one thing I see is that investments is at the forefront of digitalization. And Janos, my wonder is actually, from your perspective, what do you see as investments and how does investments are driven by digital transformation in CE particularly? 
Thanks, Anna. Just following up on what you mentioned in your introductory thoughts, how digitalization is, is all around, uh, we can have clearly the same observation from the transactional perspective, particularly in our CE region. Digitalization drives a significant increase in, uh, in investments and uh, has been elevating you know, transactional world to a whole new level, I think. Very obviously, the topic creates new companies, startups, new ventures all around, and uh, these businesses would be seen by others as potential targets. But equally, if, if not the, the companies themselves, their solutions that they bring to the market, new products, new, new services, these equally create uh, interesting topics for, uh, for investors. And one would obviously mention in this respect, the cryptocurrency, blockchain method, but equally in, in medical, in real estate, so many other uh, industries, one can observe these innovative technologies, services that, that ultimately become acquisition targets in our region in particular. But even if no investments and acquisitions are ultimately undertaken, digitalization and digital transformation is, is apparently bringing about a whole new set of forms of, of various business collaborations and, and partnerships. So the question, Anna, back to you, what trends would you observe in that respect in our region? Actually, this is also my feeling and my perception of the market. Lately, what we have seen is that sectors are, in fact, merging the role of stakeholders in traditional sectors are changing and uh, new partnerships are forged. New players enter uh, previously reserved fields which were established for the incumbents. And when we talk about this, probably a very clear and good example is the telecom sector. Uh, if we look back 30 years ago, the telecommunication was just simple based on analog fixed line technology and it had one objective. It had to connect two fixed points and transmit sound. Even for that simple function, there were often quite a lot of technical limitations. The fixed line had to be free. Um, the sound was frequently really bad. The connection could drop. Nowadays, we use our mobile phone devices for almost everything. We browse internet. We collect information. It's not at the library. We pay our bills, sometimes via platforms set up by the mobile operators. We buy food. When we travel, the telecom operator would provide travel insurance, for example. So we see that traditional companies would offer much broader range of services and they would merge and nudge other sectors. On the other hand, we also see that other players would enter telecoms and say, by the way, we need that capacity, we need that technology for our own sector. For example, we see this in energy sector. Renewable energy is at the core of our future uh, development, green economy, but also it requires technological support. One such technological support is by digital transformation. One on one side, this is Internet of Things, all of the parts of the, the grid will be at some point connected and speaking to each other. But we also see that um, renewable energy investors would want to manage their generation capacity and already do to manage their generation capacity remotely. And recently I have been listening to a very interesting discussion about a renewable energy fund now being set up where the offering is not only investment into um, solar, battery storage, but also 5G network solutions. The business driver was that there is so much data which is transmitted and so many devices which are connected that the speed of transfer of data of 5G is unprecedented with almost no latency in communication between devices. This is uh, actually a critical part of O&M operations of that renewable energy operator. And on the next step, they will be looking into the uh, active participation in the grid and 5G will enable their role into that services. So another transformative merging between uh, industries that we see based on digitalization is 
uh, the field of autonomous vehicles. Autonomous vehicles will need a spectrum for the communication between various devices and transfer of constant data. Who would operate that spectrum? Would that be the telecom operator or the automotive company? So quite a few examples are uh, already present and all these technical opportunities bring together players which previously have not been in partnership, require for them to assess from operational but also legal point of view who is best positioned to manage which risks, to really discuss in detail certain steps of the provision of the services which before has not been part of their core business at all. They need to understand not only new technologies, but they need to understand new liabilities and they have to be protected. They have to feel comfortable. So as lawyers, for us, it's extremely interesting to support such new ventures, to uh, understand the business drivers, to really be the mediator between these new partnerships in order to enable uh, really um, bringing value to the customers, to the market. What we see is that sometimes such partnerships bring previously free companies, free of any regulation, subject to new regulatory rules. Absolutely, Anna. Digitalization is fundamentally transforming societies, economies in, in, in many ways. So governments and regulators must play a very major role in encouraging digitalization on, on the one hand by fostering the transformation. On the other hand, uh, uh, they can equally limit any potential negative consequences. A recent uh, OECD paper discussed or sort of identified challenges to lawmakers, regulators in four broad uh, uh, categories. The first one was the pacing problem. Very obviously, the digital trend is much faster than, than regulators can reasonably act. And so clearly there is a disconnect between the, the technological phase and pace and, and the regulatory actions. The second was uh, designing fit for purpose regulatory frameworks. This in a nutshell means that uh, digitalization blurs the, the usual delineation of markets and sectors and sometimes confuses uh, traditional distinction between market players, even at the level of consumers and pro producers. For instance, when, when you are a, a consumer of electricity, as you mentioned in the renewable uh, area, Anna. but equally you are feeding in the electricity that, that you, you yourself generate in, uh, via your household appliances. So this affects the, the, the scope of the regulators' mandates and, and activities and, and new forms of uh, regulatory intervention may be required to address uh, uh, certain market uh, uh, issues. The third uh, regulatory topic by OECD was the regulatory enforcement challenge, obviously. The digitalization, the digital transformation very often questions the traditional notion of liability and, and in particular how, how liability or responsibility for damage and, and harm caused to users of the various technologies are uh, attributed. Specific example is how difficult it is to enforce copyrights or the intellectual property rights within the internet, uh, offering and, and new ways of the distributing uh, content. Another example perhaps is, uh, is the difficulty of uh, attributing liability when uh, artificial intelligence or other autonomous technologies are, are used. Um, for instance, who's reliable for an accident on, on road when the driver was actually using an autopilot a solution in a, in a vehicle. So clearly this raises a whole lot of regulatory questions, concerns, often coupled with, uh, with the old traditional legal concepts uh, that may not be fully reflective on, on, those, uh, on those challenges. And the fourth one was the institutional and transboundary challenge. As, uh, as 
technologies often span across multiple regulatory regimes. Uh, the digital world is clearly cross-national, multi-jurisdictional, which drastically increases the uh, intensity of, of cross-border dealings and transactions. So this gives uh, businesses really a, a global reach. And as you pointed out, these, these businesses are often small, often in their startup phase, and they are not so much aware of all the regulatory requirements and challenges they might have, not only in their home jurisdiction, but, but elsewhere where they appear to have a, a business. And so in order to locate these various stages of, of processes and services across their activities, in very different countries, it is really a challenging uh, task. And obviously regulators might again help to find solutions to those challenges or, or equally make the, the life of those innovative businesses even more difficult. The forum shopping uh, and uh, other ways to avoid compliance and, uh, uh, and the regulatory exposure is clearly a feature already uh, globally not only in the in the conventional context of tax, but also more uh, uh, recently in, in data privacy and other regulated areas. So clearly a mismatch between the cross-border nature of digitalization and the fragmentation of the regulatory framework still seen nationally across the jurisdictions can very easily undermine the effectiveness of regulatory measures. So OECD is is encouraging national regulators, lawmakers to really cooperate and uh, and align their their ultimate purposes. Very obviously, the, the the domestic regulatory domain will no longer be sufficient in order to tackle all the the challenges. And and clearly, international regulatory cooperation is required. I think the question resulting is if such a a new regulatory uh, and legal framework changes or, or even in increases the burden on businesses to remain legally compliant in their activities. So what do you think, Anna? Indeed, uh, as you mentioned, Janos, a regulatory environment is really evolving on one side, new regulation, more stringent regulation, stronger uh, role of um, the um, regulatory authorities. And particularly in areas where digitalization plays a strong role, whether this is energy, whether this is telecoms, uh, banking sector, other financial institutions sectors. Um, and um, these new opportunities to enter a new market or develop new services clearly uh, uh, drive um, also the need for more compliance. Uh, sometimes it is just additional layer of compliance, but sometimes it's a completely new framework of compliance that companies have to implement into their operations. Um, and one very obvious area uh, where every company is concerned is uh, data protection. Um, and as you said, this is one of those um, regulations which goes across sectors. It covers a large, uh, large territory. I mean, EU, it is under the umbrella of a GDPR, but actually in each particular country, we have implementation which may vary, we, we may have additional requirements. And those companies would really have to put in place compliance systems to address additional risks from additional opportunities. These additional compliance systems have to be applied not only across sectors, but across um, administration, public administration, not only private businesses, multinationals. And another upcoming, they are also looking into what is currently in place, but we see that there is a, a much bigger need now, um, companies um, in investing in technology, basing their services and business models on technology, information technology. Um, they look into new areas of regulation, such as artificial intelligence regulation, for example. And if not everyone is looking at it uh, in the region, we see that there are companies already preparing for the implementation of the whistleblowing directive into the region. And again, um, the level of protection that 
it will give to whistleblowers the scope which would be covered under this umbrella protection um, for whistleblowers, um, the scope of issues which can be reported. I mean, all of this uh, requires a very, uh, very thorough assessment across jurisdictions by a variety of companies. So the increased burden for compliance is one area that we see very, very clearly. And also uh, digitalization particularly um, brings another uh, area um, uh, that companies should look into. And this is related to work culture and the way we work. Particularly now with COVID, we have a very strong boost of remote work. People became um, nomad employees and digitalization, digital transformation allows to provide services and to be in communication from anywhere in the world. world. Um, so now it is widely accepted that hybrid work model will be most probably the new normal, but this requires additional, additional preparation by businesses to adapt and to adapt not only to what employees would want, what, not only to what uh, would work for the clients, but also have to look at the various legislative frameworks in different countries. And looking into Bulgaria, for example, it would have to adapt to a legislation which is probably 30 years ago, at the best, uh, some of the provisions are 50 years ago. So how we include the new technologies and solutions of the new technologies with, with something which is from different times. So this would be a challenge. Another such area is how we sign contracts, how we take decisions on board meetings. Now that we can have the possibility to do via uh, video conference, um, but what we see is that also not across all of the jurisdictions we can have um, same uh, electronic signature, for example, if we want to sign contracts. So uh, all these uh, compliance um, questions are quite interesting. They keep the companies quite busy um, and uh, with the opportunities, they have to make more investments. And talking of investments, uh, another also interesting aspect of this compliance is that if we look 20 years ago, companies investing would undertake a very thorough due diligence of the target. They would take at least a month, probably two, uh, to review all of the documentation in great detail. The companies would be involved and read. Um, and then there'll be management meetings and questions, sessions. Now the approach is a little bit different. Um, we'll have uh, red flag due diligence, uh, which would set out the most important issues which may impact the transaction. But at the second stage, post acquisition, knowing the increased burden of compliance, the companies would look and undertake additional audits, additional internal audits on how various regulatory frameworks have been implemented in the operations of the company. And now with the whistleblowing directive, this would we'll see more and more need for such internal audits for companies to prepare for the risk that even when the most, most prudent uh, operator wouldn't have not probably seen the risks brought um, uh, by the everyday operations. So for us, uh, it's, it's, it's quite a diverse um, picture, uh, digitalization, um, but I would say that uh, it brings opportunities um, to the companies, but also to the region. You mentioned new, new investors, new startups, new business models. Um, I think that the CE region is at the forefront of looking into uh, possibilities, opportunities to test new, new ventures, new solutions, new applications, uh, new services. And this provides opportunity to develop entrepreneurial ideas. I don't know what is your perception, but 
I think this is a trend throughout the CE. No, absolutely, I agree with you. And uh, um, when preparing for this uh, sound shot, I was asking my 16 year old uh, what digitalization meant for him. And, and he said, everything, it's everywhere. So indeed, uh, as, you, as you rightfully point out, everyone, including lawyers, need to be well aware of the, of the trend and continuously monitor and think about ways how to keep up with the pace, really. I think that is a, a, a fair conclusion. Thank you for discussing this uh, very interesting topic today, Anna. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Janusz. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Wolftai Soundshot. For more information, you can contact us via email at soundshot at wolftice.com or visit our website at www.wolftice.com. You can also follow us here to receive further updates on developments in law and business from one of the leading law firms in Central, Eastern and Southeastern Europe.